Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and on today's episode of Just What the Heck Are the Devs Smoking, we have probably the craziest American battleship since Georgia, the return of the Independence, and asymmetric battles to the game, along with a pan Asian cruiser that is yet again another copy pasta of a Soviet cruiser. So, we got a lot to go over in today's video. We can talk about a couple of dev blogs released over the past couple of, well, it's a couple of hours at the time of recording, a couple of days at the time of release. If you do find yourself enjoying this video, you think it's informational and entertaining, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Helps on the YouTube side of things and we're getting ever so much closer to that 75,000 subscriber goal that we have set up next. So again, if you want to follow along as I read aloud, link to these are in the description box down below. So we're going to start out with the independence, the, the Tia's, oh man, I'm going to murder this name. Tianjin, ah, she's not that bad, and the Rhode Island, that American battleship that, um, well, we'll talk about that when we get to it. But first up is the Independence. This is a former American aircraft carrier in the game. She was part of the original American carrier line back in the day. Of course, she was removed when the odd-tier CVs were vamoosed from the game. So let's see what they have to say about her. A fast, light aircraft carrier built on the hull of a Cleveland-class cruiser. Nine carriers of this class entered service in 1943, taking an active part in all U.S. Navy operations in the Pacific during the last two years of the Second World War. Independence would join Yorktown and Essex as a part of the upcoming U.S. aircraft carrier Tech Tree Line. The ship is armed with torpedo bombers, which need less time to reach the optimal spread when dropping torpedoes compared to other carriers, especially the American carriers of the already existing branch. A single torpedo deals relatively low damage, but enjoys high speed. Independence is also equipped with attack aircraft, which fire a large number of HE rockets that have a good chance to start fires. As for the ship's dive bombers, they have relatively low penetration and fire chance values, but there are numerous bombs per attacking flight. The ship will have access to one standard squadron, torpedo bombers, and two tactical squadrons, attack aircraft and dive bombers, which will have jet-assisted takeoff. Additionally, Independence can call upon a patrol fighter which can lock on quickly to enemy squadrons but suffer from a relatively low spotting range, similar to Beern's fighter. As a result, these fighters take on a more of a defensive and interceptive role. Independence will not have access to the smoke curtain generator consumable. So, what's interesting with these support CVs is that they took away the mines, which was the most interesting part of the support CVs, and they haven't really talked much about them since. Um, I'm thinking that's probably partially because of the uh, somewhat, well, somewhat to overall negative reception of the mines and how well everyone just used the mines during testing normally use the smoke screen and now they have the smoke screen with these tactical squadrons supplanting their main squadrons if you will compared to the normal american tech tree so she has the rocket planes as her actual um is, no, I'm sorry, her torpedo bombers are the actual squadron, and then the two tactical squadrons are the attack aircraft, the rockets, and the dive bombers. So the attack aircraft, I think they're going to be the more favorable between the three squadrons. Like, the torpedo bombers are probably going to be a good source of consistent damage, but the attack aircraft with those great HE rockets, the large number of rockets that have good fire starting chances, that's probably going to be the ones you're going, to, you're going to want to go for, where the dive bombers, like they said, have a large number of bonds, but low pin and low fire chance overall. So it's kind of weird what they're doing here at the Independence. It's a support CV that doesn't have the support CV squadron. So yeah, but nice to see the Independence making its way back into the game. I wonder, it looks like they did spruce up her model a bit. Uh, the, the, these CVs are some old, old models, I can tell you, from uh, back in the day, of course. But anyway, on to the Tianjin, the Tier 9 Pan-Asian Cruiser. Tianjin is armed with nine 220mm main battery guns, which have good ballistics, accuracy, and shell penetration, but deal low damage per minute. The ship has good armor and a large HP pool, but low maneuverability. Consumables are represented by a fast damage con team, repair party, and a choice between fighter or spotting aircraft in the same slot. 
Good positioning is essential for Tianjin to unlock her full potential. Since the maneuverability of the ship is lacking, it might not be so easy to escape unfavorable situations. Consistently landing your salvos from a medium distance would be considered optimal gameplay for Tianjin. However, good survivability helps the ship to take more damage than an average cruiser, which can help Tianjin prevail in certain close combat situations. It looks like a Riga, I do believe. Let's look at the ship's stats. Um, 50,500 hit points, 25 millimeter plating, 30 second fires. I haven't really looked at the, the Riga in a hot minute. So let's just pull that up real quick on um, on fitting tool. But it wouldn't surprise me if um, they're just doing this for some upcoming event or holiday because they do this all the time with the Soviet ships. They, they just kind of you know chunk them over to the the Pan Asian line because I mean you know historically too a lot of the ships from the Soviet Union were shared with the um, with like you know China and such the a communist China yeah it's uh it's just a Riga so what's the reload time on this though Riga's 14 seconds this is 17.5 seconds okay so longer reload uh what's the trade-off does it have better AP uh Riga's AP is 5700 max from damage this AP is 5500 less AP alpha interesting um Okay, so it's got lower AP Alpha than the Riga, and it's got a longer reload time for some reason. Okay, does it get better? Well, what does it get better? <laughs> so it has fast damage con, uh, the repair party, fighter, and spotter. And um, again, it's been forever since I played Riga. It doesn't have the radar that the Riga has. So it's got fighter and spotter, which Riga can take instead of the radar, and it's got doesn't have dam doesn't have a hydroacoustic search, or a DFAA. W what's it getting out of it? I I am I am I missing something here? So what's the HE? The HE on Riga is what's the alpha? The alpha is three thousand and fifty. The HE on on yeah, it's the same thing. Three thousand fifty on the Tianjin. Uh, 37 millimeters pin, 37 millimeter pin for the Riga, 14% fire chain. Yeah, so the HE is still the same. So they, they nerfed the AP, gave it a longer reload time for reasons, took away the radar, so you can get the fast damage con. Um, is the is the heal heal better? The heal on Riga is 0.5 HP percent HP per second. Seems to be about the same. Uh, okay, I don't know. Maybe the armor's better. Um, maybe the AP is somewhat better. Maybe the ballistics are better that I'm not seeing here in the dev blog. But it, it, it just seems to be a worst Riga at this moment. Because you lose, you lose, um, 200 something points of AP shell damage. And you lose two seconds of reload time. Okay. I get. I guess we'll see when she comes out in full. Maybe there's something that, that I get we're missing here, or I'm missing here. And uh, and the dead block says it's uh, supposed to be played from medium distance. All right. All right. Well. Okay. War gaming. We'll uh, we'll see about that. If I'm missing something about the ship, guys, let me know in the comments down below. All right. So, Rhode Island now. So, Rhode Island is quite the the ship. It's a Super Florida, basically. So they say, a battleship based on one of the variants of the 1938 fast battleship design with an alternative set of main battery weaponry. The ship's main armament consists of 356mm guns originally planned for development in, the 1937, in 1937 for the North Carolina-class battleships. The ship is named after the state of Rhode Island, one of the first U.S. states, and inherits the name from an old pre-dreadnought battleship scrapped in 1923. Rhode Island is armed with 12 356mm main battery guns, a rather low cal caliber for her tier, that is true, that have decent accuracy thanks to improved dispersion and AP shells with improved ricochet angles. The ship is also armed with a large number of relatively fast-firing secondary guns, but has overall low survivability for its class and tier. However, consumables are the strong suit of this ship, as she is equipped with an enhanced repair party consumable with reduced reload time, 
a choice between fighter or spotter or surveillance radar in the same slot and engine boost in a separate slot. Wood Island's gameplay is closer to that of a battle cruiser as she is mobile and can be very effective against destroyers and lightly armored ships thanks to her accurate and fast firing guns. In close combat situations, the ship can maneuver through enemy torpedoes while her secondary guns can also deal good damage and her surveillance radar consumable can provide vision even through smoke screens, making it difficult for enemy's ships to hide. Due to her small HP pool and weak armor, it is not recommended to engage in open confrontation against other battleships or to engage in extended fights against other ships. Good lord, they cooked with this one, that is for sure, fellas. So it's a, it seems to be a tier 10 with Florida so far. Let's take a look at the ship stats. So you get uh, 74,100 hit points. Ah, there it is. 27 millimeters of plating, though. That's something that I was very curious about when uh, I saw this ship pop up. 27 millimeters of plating. I thought, well, maybe they're either going to give it 32 with a lower HP count, but not 74,000 HP, which is about right for... Well, actually, no, it is low for a tier 10. It's very low for a tier 10. I'm sorry, I was getting... I thought it was a tier 9 for a second. So, low HP for a tier 10 and 27 millimeters of plating. So, quite the glass cannon here. So 26% torpedo damage reduction, that's kind of nice. So your 3x4, 356mm uh, guns, they reload in, where's the reload time at? 25 seconds. 25 seconds, okay. And the AP's shells do a maximum damage of 9,500 with a velocity of 823 meters a second. She has a sigma of 1.7 though. That's, um, hmm. That's not great but she is going to get the american battleship dispersion pattern and they said she has an improved dispersion pattern and she can also mount the american plotting room mod 2 module which gives you another 11 percent boost to your dispersion so while the sigma might not be great the dispersion's probably probably going to be pretty tight so i think it'll probably balance itself out okay-ish but i think since it's a tier 10 and you have 356 millimeter guns at tier 10 um that's um mm, i think you could probably safely knock that up to 1.8 because 14 inch guns at tier 10 are really small no matter what way you cut it right so i think like 1.8 sigma or like 1.75 might be a better middle ground but again we'll see what it's like when the ship comes out so uh secondaries uh 220 of the 127s as per usual 7.5 kilometer base range so that means if you build into those fully that'll get you out to what 11 7 ish so decent ish range but of course they you know they, they're only going to pin barely anything because they're 127s but again it's it's about the reload time which they don't mention here for the secondaries um which is unfortunate but it's probably the i, I would say if, since they clarified as fast reloading secondaries we could probably say like georgia massachusetts you know that 2.3 second reload once you build into it so that's pretty good the possibility is there to just you know burn stuff down with the secondaries is pretty good and then you know with the 14 inch guns with 12 of them with uh, what's the fire chance 22 percent fire chance 25 second reload time 12 guns decent fire chance right there and of course you can build into that to make that more better so, but yeah, she gets quite the selection of consumables. So you can choose, between, well, you don't get to choose. You get the American Damage Con, the 22nd uh, runtime, which is excellent. Repair Party runs for 28 seconds and reloads in 40 seconds. That's good. You get four charges of, charges of that base, so five with a uh, superintendent. Engine boost, 15% engine boost for 180 seconds. Surveillance radar, 40 second runtime. 9 kilometer range, reloads at 120 seconds, 3 charges base, and then fighter or spotter. So, the Rhode Island, I'm actually fairly excited for it. Um, I, I, I didn't know that this is a battleship that I wanted, but it's pretty goofy. It does have the potential to be quite fearsome if you get caught off guard by it, but it doesn't have big guns like Georgia, right? So it's not going to be running down. What is the top speed of this thing anyway? Let's okay, 33 knot maximum speed. So, 
with the engine boost, both the flag and with engine boost running on top of that. So 15%. So that's like, ooh, ooh yeah, that, that, that's going to get up there. Like, what, 38, 39, maybe, may, maybe in the 40s? I'm, you know, just trying to quickly do math off the top of my head right now. So 5% of the flag, then 50, so 20%. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can get close to 40 with the Rhode Island. Then you can throw you know, some of the battleship skills on there. Ooh, yeah. So it's going to be fast like Georgia, but not have the ridiculously large guns like Georgia. Have smaller guns. So could be could be quite fun. I'm interested. I, I, I am very interested in the Rhode Island, and I shall watch your career with interest, sir. So that's the Rhode Island, the crazy new American battleship. And asymmetrics are returning. Uh, we thought that they were going to be vanquished from... The game since they were well too much fun but they are coming back in update 12.10 so link to this dev blog is also down below if you want to check it out it should be the second dev blog so they say asymmetric battles update 12.10 will bring back asymmetric battles to the game the latest iteration of the popular battle type will have a different format compared to the previous one as this battle will be fought in a 5v12 format with tier 6 to 10 ships and super ships, the bot team will not be able to field submarines. Ships on the player team can be can differ by one tier, while ships on the bot team will be up to two tiers lower than the ships on the player team. For example, if a player team is composed of tier 6 and 7 ships, the bots on the enemy team will be 4 and 5 ships. So they're testing it out beyond just, you know, top tier. Asymmetric battles will also have the following changes compared to previous iterations. Divisions of, of up to five players can be formed, one CV, two BBs, two destroyers, and two cruisers, and one submarine. Bot ships are now more likely to focus on the highest HP ship closest to them. Bots will now be less effective at dodging torpedoes. Bots are now more likely to head toward key areas to capture and defend them. Based on collected data, Data, uh, based on collected data and player feedback, we decided to include these changes in order to improve the gameplay experience for non-battleship classes, which is one of the main concerns put forward during the previous iteration. Changing bot behavior to, to be more active around key areas will make the gameplay more dynamic and challenging. So, asymmetrics, at least the last time it was explained to us, this is more about testing out the new AI than testing out a new game mode. But it's nice to see that it's coming back. It's a fun, goofy mode that, you know, BBs like because you can kind of smash W and go for it. However, it sounds like it's not going to be quite as easy this time as last time. There are, again, quite a few improvements. Uh, the amount of times I was able to walk towards, like, five bots and have none of them worry about me because I was at almost full health because they were too busy focusing down the low HP ship, it happened quite a few times and, again, is, is a little bit ridiculous. So, seeing this new mode... Well, new mode, or this—I sh should say—this fan favorite mode coming back is, of course, a plus, and I will definitely be, well, doing my fair share of bot abuse when this comes back out. So, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about the new ships. I'm very excited for the Rhode Island and excited for uh, Asymmetrics to make its return to the game. Share your thoughts down below if you're excited about the same things, or disappointed, or just you know, let your opinion be heard. Again, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. One way to 75,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday, wonderful weekend, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.